Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we're going to be talking about marbles. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. We will talk more about that later in the video. So Chelsea and I have been looking at the comments lately, and we see three major things coming up. And uh, the first one we're not going to be addressing in this video, because that is Slime Rancher, and that will be coming very soon. But the other two things are that you guys want to see more FDM prints, and that you guys want to see our failures a little bit more. And in the failure department, we got gotcha. you. Also, we've been using ZBrush a lot on this channel, and I know not everybody wants to spend the money for ZBrush or even likes using um, sculpting programs. So I wanted to go back and do something a little more CAD related, but after using ZBrush for so long, um, I find Fusion 360 very, very slow to work with and very, very hard to go back to. So I'm actually transitioning to Blender, which is a completely free program. And um, honestly, I'm finding it super fun to work with and pretty much superior to Fusion 360 in every category. So let's get started. What are we making today? Well, when I was a kid, um, my school always had this marble track and it was in this room that I never got to use, but I was just in occasionally. And I always saw this like giant marble thing, but I was always too afraid to ask to play with it, I guess, I don't know. I just, I never got to play with it, but I always saw it there and I always really wanted to play with it. So now I'm an adult and of course I still want to play with marbles, but I'm an adult with a 3D printer. So let's do this. So we'll put a picture up on the screen here of kind of what we're shooting for. This is similar to what I saw as a kid, but something like this is quite the undertaking. So this won't be confined to just one video. Um, this video will basically just be the basics. We'll get a few pieces and get some marbles rolling. Um, and then in the future, we'll make some some crazier things. I'll talk more about that uh, later. So I mentioned earlier that we were going to be showcasing our failures in this project a little bit more. Normally in our projects, we're kind of just making a character and printing them. So there's not a lot of failure to talk about. But when making something like this that needs to be a little more functional, the, the key to success in this is iteration. So that means by definition, failing and learning from that and then recreating it basically. So let's take it from the top. Here's attempt number one. So I wanted to go for something minimal. Obviously, I don't want to use a ton of filament. Um, and I wanted something that looked a little unique. So I didn't just want like tubes carrying marbles. So I thought something that would be fun would be sort of a rail system that I would have two rails that the marble would sit on. So that was the first attempt. So I started with this. This is I called it a node. It's an octagon shape and it allows the marble to cross in all four of the main directions and very simple just it's just a tube cut out of this so marbles can roll across it like you would expect then in the sides i cut holes where these rods would be inserted and it worked pretty good you just stick them in like this and then the marble and then the marble can roll across them right but the problem was these poles are very tiny and very hard to print. The first attempt we did, we had them printing on the bed up like this, and anybody who's used a printer knows that that's not a good situation. Very easy to pop off, and if you don't have your printer settings right, um, the heat differences along the way can cause inconsistency. So I tried laying the poles down um, and then just sort of cutting into it a little bit. So they would be mostly cylindrical with a flat edge, and then you would just have to make sure that the flat edge wasn't where the marble is. And we ended up with these. And we went a little bit further with these. You can see they have a flat edge there. So they sit and print like that. They warp a little bit, but ultimately they were a lot easier to print. And these kind of worked. You could still just plug them in the way that you want. And marbles roll. But ultimately these were still decently difficult to print. They're a lot more, um, there's a lot more maintenance involved with like making sure that you have all the right pieces and that they don't sit in the holes as well as I would want them to. So I ultimately decided to go with a second idea. Now, before I continue, this is a good opportunity to talk about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering all sorts of different skills. They have a premium membership that gives you full access to all of the classes. So if you're going on a creative journey, Skillshare can help you with all of the skills you want to learn. It's a great place to fuel your creativity and point you in the right direction. For example, if you wanted to learn more about 3D printing and CAD design, there are a bunch of Skillshare classes 
that tackle those subjects. I just started a class by Lauren Slowick called 3D Printing Solving Problems Through Product Design, where she talks about designing 3D models specifically for bringing them to the real world and the full process of creating a product. I've also personally been really interested in game design lately, and they have a ton of classes on Unity and just game design in general. So whether you're trying to learn a new skill or just improve your knowledge on an existing skill, um, Skillshare is an extremely useful tool. It's also super affordable compared to taking a, an in-person class. The annual subscription is less than $10 a month, and since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a two-month free trial of the premium membership so you can explore and start learning. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the marbles. So for attempt number two, um, I scrapped the poles, but I really did like the nodes. So I kept those. I also made a two way so it can just roll in one direction rather than having both directions. And then instead of poles, I made these little tracks basically. And they connect via this pin and you just plug them in. Very easy, very easy to print too. So they just go in like that. And then of course the marble can roll along it. So it's not quite as cool looking, I don't think, but um, it prints way easier. There's no supports involved. There's a little bit of bridging where the pins go, but actually a little bit of drooping there is fine because it helps hold the pin in a little bit better. So I have a couple different versions of this track. This one is 10 centimeters. This one is 20 centimeters, 200 millimeters, whatever. But the problem with these is that they're very long and very square edges. And it's kind of hard to put mouse ears on these because they, um, you would need to cut them off pretty perfectly for them to line up. So warping is an issue. And as you can see, we had quite a bit of an issue with these and um, they still work to plug in for the most part, but they no longer line up with the node and it just does not work very well. I also tried printing sort of a little S curve and it prints on its side like this, still with no supports, but it's just a little bit different than these straight pieces. But that introduces a different issue with warping and it actually makes the pin uh, hole too small. So I can't even get a pin in there. So I needed to do something else. Um, first of all, the, the, tw the 200 millimeter ones, just not necessary. You can print two of these just as easily and warping is less of an issue there. So I just kind of scrapped this idea. I will leave this file in the end result. So if people have really good bed adhesion, um, you can still print these, but for people that don't like what, like us, um, you can just use these uh, 100 millimeter versions. So the next problem I tried to tackle was getting these nodes off of the ground because um, for marbles to work, you need some sort of slope because they're a mostly gravity based movement system. I needed some sort of stand that you could put these nodes on and then you could put that S curve that would go down, connect to another node, and we could just do all sorts of fun things there. So um, this one took several iterations as well. I started with more of a scaffolding type of idea. So I basically just had four boxes. They, they went straight up and then there was sort of an X that connected them and it would have printed with no supports. We tried to print a few, but uh, none of them stuck to the bed. We didn't get a successful one. So I scrapped that idea the, the legs were just too tiny on it and it didn't work. I wanted to keep it open because I wanted them to be able to stack on top of each other. So I wanted space for marbles to go in between them basically. So on to attempt number three. And I think this is where we really started to get um, our final designs here. So first of all, for the stands, I tried um, something a little more solid and I just called these things the stack and the nodes basically go on top of the stack like this, they'll slide into place. And as you can see, the new nodes have little um, triangle shaped holes cut out on both sides. So you can just place them on top of the node or on top of the stack and then another stack can go on top and it leaves room for the marble to go through on the bottom. So this worked out pretty well, but we did find with this nice little arch shape here that um, it was tending to warp up when it was printing, just this little lip here before they connected and it would, it would just curl up because it's out over nothing and so it's cooling faster and the, the print head as it was going by was catching that and then knocking these legs off of the print bed. So then you end up with this, but yeah, you can see there that that moved and just not good situation there, bird's nest. 
So my initial solution was just to flip it over because these were kind of the same situation, but these, since they were underneath the node, they didn't need um, an arch there. So just flip it over, print it like that. And this honestly worked, but um, I wanted something that worked a little bit better because you can see it just bridges right there. And it, it, it worked out decently, but I wanted something that was a little easier to print. So I decided to go with a flat design there. So it would just bridge and you could print it like that. No problem. But, but even then we noticed that um, there was a little bit of weirdness like we got this weird angle here. So we were wondering if this one was peeling up off the bed. So I ultimately went with something that was even easier than this to print and it could print on a flat surface. I just basically took, I just basically took this, cut it in half right here. And then I'm going to use both of those halves to make a hole. So that way it, they both print like this and they're identical. So there's nothing really confusing about it. They just connect with a pin and they are a normal stack. So now we can put the stack and just push it in and it's a very tight fit. So it works out like that. Connect this up. Have another stack on there and then, then we can take something like this that has a stack underneath of it and basically just put it on top. So, and I don't have a pin holding those together, so I'm just going to hold them but that basically allows for um, these to stack on top of each other, which is why I call them a stack. And you can see here that the marble will actually go all the way. Oh, shit. are you kidding me? <laughs> all right, so didn't go as planned. We'll be going back for uh, version four. I'm basically just gonna raise that up a little bit. Um, for the final product, but I can shove it in there. So it's real close, just not quite. So here is the final result. These are all the files that I will be releasing. We've got the node four way that has pins on every side, we've got the stack holes. Then we've got the node two way, which just has the one path across, but it still has the four holes and two um, pin holes. Of course, we have the stack that goes along with it and this will work inside these little uh, triangles here for the nodes. We've got the pins that connect everything together. We have the straight 100 millimeter piece. We have the straight 200 millimeter piece for the daring among you. We have a turn piece that just has pin holes on either side and it turns it 90 degrees. Also, I realized that this isn't a 90 degree turn, but the nodes here to here is 90 degrees. And then the slope piece, which will allow it to give a little bit of momentum and height variation. Now, as I mentioned, this is just a starting point. In the next video in these series, I'm gonna start making some more fun things. Like I wanna create a starting position where I can have multiple marbles and a little lever that I can release all the marbles. And of course we'll do classic things like a funnel and then we'll get even uh, crazier with some of the things we're gonna do with this. I think it can be really fun. Also, um, if you have any ideas or suggestions on how we can make this better, let us know down below. And if you wanna get your hands on these files, um, you can over at our Patreon. These are on the core tier. Also, a huge thank you to all of our patrons. They are how we can keep this channel going. You can see their names on the screen right now. Also, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, wear a mask. <laughs>